I'm Lou Brutus. Dustin Kensru of Thrice joins me. It's good to see you. Where exactly are you? Are you at home? Uh, I am at home. I'm at my desk, little kind of home studio. Uh, it's in my kid's bonus room. <laughs> I'm always disappointed when there's not stuff to peek at on the walls behind folks. And and let me tell you something. Even if they tell you, oh, I don't look at that stuff, they do. <laughs> uh, yeah, sadly, the guitars are to the left of uh, me, so you can't see them. But uh, yeah, it's a nice little setup. Is there much stuff in the house to tell people if they came in and didn't know you that you were a musician or not so much? Uh, there's a guitar that hangs uh, downstairs, rotating guitars that hang in one spot. But uh, other than that, not really. If you came up here, I would assume you'd guess that I at least liked music a lot. Do you have uh, an attic or a basement filled with, you know, stuff related to your career? uh like like old like Any posters i don't know i mean posters, we have passes picks i like i purged a lot of stuff a while ago and i kind of regret it like a bunch of old concert posters and stuff and uh now that we have like our our own studio that we record at i i wish i would have kept them all to put them somewhere but i said i had nowhere to put them all and uh, i just felt like someone else will enjoy them so got rid of them but uh yeah, I don't I I also try not to I try not to gather too many things cuz I know that I will. So I I try to get kind of brutal with it and uh only own like guitars that I'm actually using in uh, normal capacity, stuff like that. So And you're, you know, more years into this than I had realized, you know, cuz we're talking about a 20th anniversary here and I'm like that can't be where that's like a typo and I'm like, man, I played that on the air when it was new. So uh, you know, the the obvious question for all this, does it seem like 20 years since, uh, you know, the artist in the ambulance? Uh, I don't know. I mean, what's weirder even is that we've been a band for 25 years this year, which is you know. just crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> time ceases to mean <laughs> a whole lot as you like get, I, I mean, like 20 years now is just like, that seems like a long time, but it also feels like yesterday in a weird way too and i don't know um it's it seems very if i'd sit back and think about it it seems very strange because i you know i remember when the bands that i loved when i was growing up you know w had been playing 10 years and i was like that's absolutely insane like that's so cool those guys are so old <laughs> yep 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 and i remember touring with face to face when they were had hit 10 years and thinking that that was just epic is there anything else you can equate it to perhaps the seemingly very quick passage of time for folks who have kids? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I just remember people telling me that time would speed up as I got older and I, I didn't really believe it. And now it's just light speed. I don't know. I can't like, it's, there's not enough hours in the day ever. And um, yeah, it just feels like it's the world is spinning quicker. So as you look back on this music and have revisited it to, uh, to get it back out, I, you know, what are your thoughts on this? What do you remember uh, of long ago? What sort of memories came up? Tell me all about it. Yeah, it was really cool to go back and revisit a record like this that, you know, such a big part of our history. It was just a unique time and when it came out. Um, and, it, you know, it's it's held a, a unique place in our discography and our history. And uh, at the same time, it's always been a record that uh, we had, you know, uh, reservations about the way that ended up sounding. Um, some of that was you know, us being young and not fully knowing how to transfer what we did live into the studio. And it feels a bit stiff the way we played it. Um, I mean, these are things that probably other people are not noticing because that's the only version they've ever heard. Right. But we play these songs live all the time and it's been 20 years of playing them and they, they have their own groove and flow and openness now. And we'll hear, you know, the old recording and just be like, Whoa, like that doesn't even feel like the same song sometimes. Uh, but the song itself, you know, might be a great song. And so coming back to it and and revisiting in a way that tried to be 
uh, very respectful and loving to like the original, but letting it breathe in new ways and, and just feel, I mean, I think it, in the end, it feels, uh, almost like a, you know, a, a live version of this record, but, you know, in a studio, it, it, it sounds like a, a studio record, but people have also, you know, uh, mentioned that it feels, it has a live-ish quality to it, which is, you know, I think something we try to instill into all our recordings at this point. Um, but it's nice to be able to hear the songs now the way that they kind of live in our heads uh now and share that with people um and you know, it was hard to know what people would think of it uh i thought there'd be a lot more negative reactions because it's hard you know you've you've lived with this thing so long and if it's you know an album you love it's weird when anyone touches it and messes with it um but we seem to have threaded the needle to where it's overwhelmingly positive feedback and people uh you know, the most fun thing to hear is that uh, so many people are like, it's like I'm hearing this for the first time again, which is like a weird thing to be able to give someone. Um, it's a strange experience. So, yeah. And you uh, have some friends along for the ride this time. Yeah. Um, we figured, yeah, if we're going to go back in here, it'd be fun to have, you know, some people who were, you know, either um, this record's been important to or that, uh, they've been important to our journey or were around at the time we were doing it. So it's, it's a mix of people. Um, you know, we've got, um, like Holy Fun people in there who like grew up with their you know dad listening to our stuff. <laughs> uh, we've got Chuck Reagan on there who, you know, we were touring with back when we were doing this. We've got Brian McTernan who recorded the record the first time. Um, and that was fun. And also just, uh, we really wanted Brian to know, like, this is not a slight on you that we were re-recording this uh it's uh mostly slight on us and we've never loved the the mix of the original which he didn't do and andy wallace did who's done so many great records and just for whatever reason it did not translate the way we thought it was going to so um yeah sam from the architects is on there um andy hole from manchester who's a, a good friend and um just amazing vocalist it's yeah it was it was fun to to pull some people in there Tell me about uh, Sam's contributions and uh, what your relationship is like with him. He, he's he's a really uh, interesting guy to speak to. He's very well rounded, I think, uh, intellectually. Yeah, and just a, a lovely human. Um, and he has been a fan of the band for a long time, and is almost always out there in London when we have a show. I feel like whenever he's in town, he comes out and and hangs out. So. Um, yeah, that was a, a fun one. He, uh, at the end of uh, Under a Killing Moon, he does some of the, the screaming with me on there. Um, we tried not to, it's hard to balance, but we try not to over feature um, the people coming in in respect for the original album and what people would feel about it. Um, I feel like we probably could have pushed further on that, but uh, oh well, hindsight, you know. <laughs> And now you have a song built into the set. So whenever he shows his face at a gig, you know, you know, when you're going to bring him out. That would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, a little bit earlier in the conversation, you were talking about, you know, sort of being transported back to what that time was like for the band when you first did the record. You know, where were everybody's heads at back then? Because, again, you know, you were all essentially kids um, and you were tr probably trying to soak up things like sponges and learn where was everybody's head at where was the band at at that point yeah i mean it was a crazy time because we had put out the illusion of safety um you know the year before and then all of a sudden had had all this major label interest in trying to sign the band and that was just not something that was even remotely on our radar um and so that was a weird thing to navigate and we had to just eventually decide like okay we don't have to do this but if we find the right people and the right offer like we can do this uh which i think was uh freeing and took some of the pressure off so we're like we're fine we can just keep making records at, you know on a smaller label whatever but ended up uh signing with island and the team that was there at that time um we felt like they really understood us understood that we were going to be a career rock band we weren't you know trying to get a quick you know ride to the top on 
some pop song and uh you know we were open to having stuff on the radio or whatever we but we just we had no experience with that and we just wanted to make music that we liked so um yeah we felt like there was a, a good team there and uh so we didn't have a lot of like uh, pressure from the the label um i i'm sure you know brian was shielding us a little bit from that but i, I mean he had a good relationship with them too so uh i mean the only thing is we were tight on time trying to get out for um we had tours scheduled and then you know uh all that's left was the first single and our, we we had to actually finish that before the rest of the record was finished which was a little odd and strange just because of the timeline that we had so um yeah so it was just a lot of stuff happening it was an exciting time and also uh you know i'm sure a bit overwhelming <laughs> for all of us in a lot of ways you know how much of that part of it that was overwhelming is due to the fact that you know on one hand you're excited hey you know we can get a deal and you know maybe be set up very well but the opposite side of that is man what if we sign a bad deal and we're screwed for like the next 10 years well yeah and it's hard and you do hear a lot of horror stories where yeah. like a record gets shelved i mean that's just that's terrible um and that was always you know a a fear going into it of like we really need to not get ourselves in that kind of situation so that's why we made sure that when we signed like they are not expecting something that we are not you know expecting to give them uh and you know over time all those people that were there went to different labels and stuff and you know essentially became a different label when we left um but uh, at that time we felt we felt pretty confident and uh it it turned out um i i don't think it could have um we could ask for for much more than than we got uh with that crew there and we made visu with most of that same team and that was a big shift too and they were fine with it so uh yeah it was good um but definitely yeah that that fear of like <laughs> getting locked into a bad thing is uh is always there especially you know just in in the big the big machine at that point i mean you can trust people but people are moving around all the time tell me about preparing the packaging and the art for this version of it yeah so i mean with the original uh we had uh my buddy matt most uh who's in the band cold war kids uh too uh, but at that time cold war kids was just the name of his art stuff that he was doing and um yeah he took that original photo of that hospital um where was that i think in the hague i think um but uh and had the so it's just all those different photos from his travels most of them are over in europe i think um so i wanted to have it feel like similar enough to where you're like hey that that looks familiar but uh also have a pretty different vibe so I found a photo of, uh, it is a hospital, but it's, uh, I think it's in Australia and it's a mental hospital, but it's this kind of brutalist, uh, architecture it has very different feel. Um, and then we took away like any of the kind of scratchiness and went with a little bit of a, a cleaner look and, uh, did that kind of grayish tone instead of the white. Um, so it, it's fun seeing them next, next to each other because it's very clear that it's you know set up in the same way the same shapes and stuff like that but uh yeah this time around we're releasing it ourselves so it's got our little imprint thing uh new grass a little uh n on there instead of the island logo um yeah so it, it's exciting I mean, this is the first thing that we're actually putting out uh ourselves uh we'll still be doing the next record with epitaph but they let us kind of do this thing on our own Whose job is it to make sure that all of the liner notes and names and everything are sp spelled correctly? Because by God, even in this day and age, sometimes stuff gets through. And I've spoken to bands who are like, yeah, it's a great record, but we misspelled so-and-so's name. And now we all want to crawl into a hole and die, you know? So wh whose job was it to do the the final look at everything? Uh, I guess it's our manager, Kenny's job, but uh, I don't know. We always try to look through too. it. So it usually goes like me and then Riley and Kenny will look it over and then, you know, 
whoever's printing and i'm assuming they're doing some kind of run through too but inevitably there's something messed up in there hopefully not someone's name <laughs> uh we spoke a little bit about under a killing moon before with sam uh what can you tell me about silhouette silhouette i feel like is i've said this before but i think it's the song on that record that we could still put out on a record now and it would not feel super weird like it wouldn't feel like wait this is you know something old or like the way that you used to do things it just i think was a bit ahead of its time for us in some of the stuff that we were playing with the some of the time signature stuff the way we were doing it there's like the the sevens on the uh, a lot of it's in seven actually um and it but it's got a very cool groove to it doesn't feel super mathy um uh, it's heavy in kind of a, a slow groovy way as opposed to some of the more spastic stuff that we had been doing mm-hmm. before um, yeah. but yeah it's and it's it's always fun to play live it's one of the main ones that we've really played a lot through the years it's you know it's one of the ones we have to be like oh, okay this tour we're not gonna play solo it because we've played it <laughs> every other tour and it's great but we'll take a break so uh and that one i was really happy to revisit too because it's one of the ones that felt most stiff to me especially the way i sang it so uh it's nice to to get to hear it uh the way that the way that we play it live now uh which leads me into how much of this are you going to do on the tour coming up in the in the springtime uh we'll run the whole record straight through that'll the show will start there and which will be the first time we've played it in its entirety and and then we'll we'll finish it up and we'll uh, play some other stuff at the end um but and it'll be really fun to just line it up just like it is on the record and um i don't know i, I think having the revisited out is a a fun touchstone between uh what that'll be like for people and uh the old record <laughs> Have you ever wanted prior to this to go back and sort of finagle with anything you had done before? And and by way of of sort of helping set you up here, uh, I did, and I've had this with a few other different types of artists in different fields before, but I was interviewing a guy named Chuck Jones, who was an Oscar winner and did some of the most famous Warner Brothers cartoons. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I asked him, I said, you know, you, you go to these film festivals and you're treated like a god and they show your old cartoons are you comfortable watching them or do you want to fix them and he went oh my god it's torture i can't do it (laughs) he said all i think is we should have held the coyote getting hit with the boulder one more frame or whatever it was you know are you able to go back and listen to things you did before and and enjoy them or are you just going "Ah, ah, ah, i should have done this i should have done that uh it depends (laughs) on the era how much i think that you you <laughs> cringe um i think so we uh, it's interesting because you know we had just revisited the prior record not in uh re-recording it but it was the 20th anniversary of the illusion of safety uh and so you know with all this coming up we didn't want to do a whole tour around that either but we're like we got to do something so we did um a festival and we did four shows at home where we played the whole thing and I mean, there's a lot of work to relearn all that just for that, but um, it was a lot of fun too. But it's it's such, especially that record is just such a different headspace than than we're in now. The way we we're writing stuff and uh, the speed of a lot of it, and uh, so it's I mean, physically a different way of playing music. Um, and so that <laughs> I think prepped us a bit for doing this project too. But it also, I mean, so there's things in there you were like. I don't know what I was thinking there, but <laughs> you know, it, it is what it is. And you know, that record, I think we're happy like playing it and not, and not cringing too much. Uh, we threw in like a song from the first record when we did it live and at like in the encore and just completely took a part out, which we realized we had done a couple years earlier when we'd played it we're like oh yeah we can just take that part out and no one i feel like people don't even notice this you get to the next breakdown everyone's like oh sweet yeah this is great but there's this like weird disco break in an old song called uh 
Phoenix ignition. And it's just like, I don't, I don't know what's happening in this part. So there's a mix of things. And the further you go back, the more is cringy. But uh, up until like the record after artists, I like, I think it's great what we did. I, I don't love my singing on it. And then after that point, I'm, you know, I mean, there's always little things you'd be like, eh, that part is whatever, but it gets, it gets better and better <laughs> as you go on. When you're out and about, how many longtime old school Thrice fans do you run into? Folks that that you're, you know, that you know have been there for pretty much the whole ride. Um, it's just super random. I mean, it'll be, you know, I won't run into anyone for a while and then there'll be like three in two days or something. You know, it's just kind of funny. Um but uh yeah, it's always fun. Uh I feel like I don't know if it's just time gone by, but it's it's generally like a pretty mellow uh, interaction. Someone's just like, oh, yeah, man, like you've been my favorite forever. And it's a very beneficial little uh, conversation and not super awkward. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's it, it's funny because like during. I think just the age we were and whatever, but there was definitely a time when just and especially that we were playing local, but going out anywhere in Southern California was, there'd be multiple people every time. And uh, it's definitely not that way anymore. That's got to be fun to a degree. And if somebody gets too excited, that's really kind of a drag, I would imagine. I just, I just feel bad for people when they're, because usually they, they feel terrible because they know that like they're, I don't know. It's, I can't, I can't talk. And, uh, I don't know. Try to reassure them. It's fine. Uh, I get it. Yeah, cal calm them down so you can have a human moment so they're not five minutes later going, I can't believe I embarrassed myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. No, it's, you know. it's fine. It's uh, Humans are weird. Our brains are weird. And, yeah, there's no judgment there. Who was the first rock star you ever met? Do you remember? Um, I met Elvis Costello when we were signing with... Um, island he was in town and he very graciously like like they were telling us that all these other people and they're like who are you excited is on their label we're like Elvis Costello's on that's cool and I don't think they were expecting that. like oh okay well he's in town and they're like oh and they're like, you want to meet him we're like yeah <laughs> he like sat down with us and just we just stared at him and he you know spun some yarns for us he was really sweet uh I met Bruce Springsteen when I was touring with um well like tom morello is also a rock star but so tom morello has a, a side project called the night watchman and of i was course. looking for him uh doing solo stuff so i was driving i was his driver and opener so i was driving him around in a minivan across the south which was a blast and he's very sweet um but he's friends with bruce springsteen so uh, bruce came to uh a show just too late to hear me cover State Trooper, uh, which I absurdly wanted him to see, which seems horrible, but uh, might as well, I guess. But anyway, he did not see that. But we drank whiskey back backstage, so that was fun. There you go. Yeah. You know, Springsteen is one of the few rock stars I have not met, and he grew up four miles away from me, and everybody <laughs> where I live is like, oh, yeah, we saw Bruce. Same on all the time, yeah, he's just walking around and yeah exactly yeah or he would be the only guy driving down through the middle of freehold in a red lamborghini you know <laughs> you know it's him <laughs> them born to run dollars go a long way i think but they do yeah he was he was great yeah yeah, yeah i've heard nothing okay. but good things well dustin it's always great to speak to you and uh again i'm i'm somewhat having a warped brain moment considering <laughs> 25 years of the band and 20 years of the album. Cause it was, I swear it was one of those things that album's not it. That's album's from, Oh shit. It's 20 years old. <laughs> so, I'm glad it's making someone else feel old besides me. So yeah, exactly. Well, you, there's good old and there's bad old. This is uh, this is, this is the good kind of old. So right. uh, in, enjoy it. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the spring. Uh, it's always great to talk to you. Thanks so much for having me.